Congratulations, Bitcoin. One trillion dollars. To put one trillion dollars in perspective, um, that is before the latest round of currency uh, printing around the world, we had ninety point four trillion dollars. If you take the whole global money supply, that's that's printed money and money on screens just created a, an even easier whim than the money that's printed at a whim on a whim. So Bitcoin has now reached what was uh, pre pandemic, uh, the global world money supply, one ninetieth of now, that doesn't sound really much. But think about how many times has Bitcoin gone 100x in its time, quite a few. I know since I bought it, I think it was 16,000% <laughs> when it went up. So um, if you think about that that way, we actually don't have long to go before it swallows up every currency. And we also don't have long to go before it, it unseats. Uh, I, I think it will already be one of the top five currencies in the world by this stage. Yeah, it would be. Woo! So anyway, but the, the world money supply now, because of all the money, money printing, especially in America, is going to be well over a hundred trillion now. But it's getting to the stage now where it's just a number, and it's also getting to the stage now where something I'd said in a video a few years ago about yes, Bitcoin could reach a million dollars, but what would a million dollars buy you? Um, and this is what we need to understand about hyperinflation, the nature of hyperinflation, which is that prices will change. Prices will get more and more expensive as inflation occurs and also as deflation occurs with Bitcoins. So you've got things running on, on a sliding scale in both directions, counteracting against each other. And that is the increasing buying power of Bitcoin and the decreasing buying power of all fiat currencies, ending with most likely the yuan. Because I, th I think the, the yuan can last longer than it's, it's now a world currency alongside the USD. The difference is America don't own yuan and uh, the Chinese own at least four trillion dollars of USD, meaning if there's only two, uh, you know, they've got the last standing two currencies at any time, even now, the Chinese can sink the American dollar just by dumping it on the market and actually bouncing, rinsing up and down and destroying traders, that kind of thing. Right. So uh, I, I do believe that will be the, the one the, the yuan that will be the last standing. Although it could just be the two of them together collapsing together, uh, who knows where the, the the euro fits into that? Because there's actually more global trade taking place apparently now in euros than there is in the USD, so that could already be relevant. And that could also already be something that also threatens. Um, you know, there's a lot, a lot of countries in the world that won't that probably won't fall into the trap of of allowing China to effectively control the trade structure of the world, right? And they would probably be a lot more trusting of Europe. Besides the fact that Europe's got more population than the USA does. And probably, even though it's... Yeah, I was going to get into another area, but let's not get into it. Of comparing Europe and the USA. I oh, will get into it. Uh, a lot of people in the US always um, you know, talk down about Europe because it's not as, you know, it's not as um, capitalistic um, and, you know, driven as America is. But, you know, from having lived in both and being all around both, every little nook and cranny of both, I know where I'd rather live and I know where it is better by a long, long, long shot, far better than America. I'll tell you right now, America doesn't come even a, a smidgen as close to how good Europe is. And that, and the thing is, that's on top of a lot of the American YouTubers that go on, you know, that they lived in Europe for a while and then it's still, you, you've got nostalgia for home. Your country's not better than Europe. Just put that shit away right now. This is why more people live here. This is why, um, uh, you know, we... we you look at our environment, we've got to look after it a little bit more because we've been here longer. We understand how you can fuck things up uh, where you still haven't got to that stage yet in America that you, you actually realize how, yeah, it's a big country, but it's also small. Yeah, Europe's big, but it's also small. Uh, it, there is ways to live a bit, bit more sustainably. And I don't mean to be buying into the whole um, uh, government indoctrination of the aspects of scarcity and, you know, the, the real problems in this world, which are effectively the billionaire class. Um, living like there's um, no tomorrow, um, squandering resources. I'm actually talking about the simple fact that all around us there is too much uh, waste, and just simple as that. I'm not not going to go into global warming or anything like that. Just simple waste pollution. Europe deals with it uh, better than a lot, better than everywhere in the world from what I've seen. 
Um, places like Canada and Australia are totally hypocritical when it comes to things like, and New Zealand too, when it comes to uh, sustainability. They're just full of shit. I know, because I've spent time in all these countries and lived in them, right? So um, opinions that come from people uh, should, you know, should go hand in hand with actual experience. Don't just give me your opinions. I don't want to hear it if you're not experienced. Okay, bye. Um, yeah, that's a good thing for Bitcoin, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, woo! Um, yeah, get some Bitcoin. Just sit on it, whether it's point zero 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 one, whatever. That will probably be enough to uh, to I don't know. There's a few things I know. I said goodbye. I want to carry on saying one more thing. There's a few videos like for, in the MGTOW community that that will say. Um, I think it's a book actually, how to retire on two hundred thousand dollars in Southeast Asia, right? Uh, I don't know. Increasingly, that that won't be possible because that two hundred thousand dollars will become worthless. But I get the guy's point. It is impossible to retire on a lot less than what people think. You just need to modify your thinking in the way you live. Um, for example, uh, in the USA, if I was forced to live in the USA and I was very, very like, lower decile a person struggling to get a job, instead of bouncing and yo-yoing, I was just watching a, sh a couple of shows on, on tiny houses, instead of bouncing and yo-yoing between um, uh, clawing together the money to pay some asshole who's going to, you know, for, for a bond, who's going to end up stealing the bond money off me and then I'm going to not be able to pay the power bill and then eventually I get thrown out then my bond money gets taken because he, he finds a scratch in the window or something like that, you know what I mean? And then uh, going homeless for a while and blah, 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 you know. I, I would just move into... Uh, I would literally build myself a hut in the wilderness. <laughs> I'm serious. It is so important to get out the grasp of the system. And and the one of the easiest ways to do that, if you can make yourself a few thousand dollars, is buy a van live out the van, kit it out a little bit better over time. And then, you know, once once you, um, let's see, once you get back, you need to find yourself a way that you can kind of work. <laughs> I'm going to sound like, um, like like the system wants us to be now, which is um, working remotely. But it really is something I've been doing for a long time. Um, for 20 years, I've been doing remote work. And uh, it's, it's something that people should have been looking at a long time ago. But trying to make yourself... Uh, put yourself in a situation that you're geographically free so you don't need to live in the cities because uh, cities are going to be shit areas where there's going to be a lot of desperation things are going to get worse and worse and worse as they already are so now when when I talk about these things now it doesn't look like it's any anything prophetic at all because it's already happening everywhere right but just be in a situation the reason why I say van is it makes you mobile you can move away from bullshit you can move towards opportunity right but then once you've found that, then you can settle down. That's what I did with this bus here, for example. Um, I, I drove around Europe, found a place, parked in a barn. You know, I, I could, I could, um, you know, uh, find a barn somewhere else and then park up there, get electricity put into it. Then I've basically got a home all, all set up, you know, and the and the and the the barn protects the bus and all that kind of stuff, you know. So it is it is possible to do, and you don't have to. <clears throat> You don't have to take thousands of dollars and put yourself into another situation where you're under some other bastard again, you know. There's ways to be free without having to spend a hundred thousand dollars and put yourself in a mortgage and then get yourself in negative equity. There's ways to get ahead. It's not that difficult. Um yeah, anyway, watch the Red Pill Diaries channel if you want to see more on that. I'm pretty sure I've had a lot of videos on that over the over the years or uh, however long I've had that channel for. Okay. I mean redid the, that channel if you know what I mean okay bye that's it